Hola mi gente, welcome to MSP Unplugged. I am your host Paco Lebron. This is the place to learn how to run your IT service business, whether you are a one person shop or leading a team for the journey. This is the place for you. Let me go ahead and introduce you, my co-host, my partner in crime, none other, live and in the flesh, <laughs> Mr. Rick Smith over at Renactus Technology. Rick, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for the great introduction. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my flow as we are live at Pax A Beyond over in the beautiful Gaylord Convention Center. But I am surprised to say that this is the first time that we have had our guest today, and we have none other than the Global Channel Chief over at SonicWall, Michelle Raguso McBain. Michelle, how are you today? Oh, I'm so excited to be a part for this inaugural journey with you. Uh, you know, and as I would, we've known each other for years. Yes. And it's crazy to think that I have yet to have had you on the podcast. So I wanted to correct that issue. Thank as you. Today. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. But before we go into uh, Michelle's journey and talk a little bit about what she's go going on at SonicWall, I wanted to highlight our two sponsors for this episode. Our first sponsor is SuperOps. SuperOps is the AI-powered PSA and RMM platform designed for fast-growing MSPs. They provide a lean and powerful way to engage with clients and grow your revenue. Head over to the link in our show notes to sign up for your trial today. We also have Huntress. Huntress allows you to deploy and manage detection and response for endpoints and identities in minutes, powered by custom-built technology for SMBs and the expert analysts in their 24-7 security operations center. Head over to Huntress.com slash unplugged for your trial today. All right. We're going to go ahead and get this show on the road and talk a little bit about what's going on with Ms. Michelle. Michelle, how are you today? I am doing great. It is a fabulous start to Pax A Beyond, and you can feel the energy. Awesome, awesome. And so, Michelle, being with Sonic Wall, who was one of our grateful sponsors over at TechCon Unplugged, which we'll go into it later in this episode, and appreciate the support, as always, always. with our good friend over at Solutions Granted on the, what is the division now called for Solutions Granted at Sonic Wall? Managed Security Services with my friend Michael Crean. Michael Crean, who has been a great friend of ours and supporter over the years, have now joined forces with Sonic Wall, and Sonic Wall has been gracious enough to uh, lend him again for our great summit uh, that's happening in September, but more about that later crash on. that party. I think, <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. should. It will be in D.C. Um, but you know, Michelle, obviously you are a, well, not for those that are listening, but for me and knowing you, you are a uh, channel veteran. You have been in the space for quite some time. For those that don't know who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you kind of got into the tech space? Sure. Well, I've been in the technology channel for 20 years now, which is pretty remarkable to think about because it's like time flies when you're having fun. That's a true <laughs> statement. But I didn't know anybody who knew anybody who worked in tech growing up. My family immigrated to America. I'm the first in my family to go to college, the first to get an MBA, the first to work in tech. So I'm really happy to be here for two decades. Um, and it's been a lot of mentorship that in the community, we live in a family. Like this is really, the channel has been my family. I spent a lot of time on the road. I have two daughters, two stepdaughters, a husband who did the opening keynote. So we are a tech family, which means our kids will probably join the circus. Um, <laughs> but I love what I do. I love that um, I've been a part of being able to change the way the world lives, works, plays, learns, and now keeps people safe in cybersecurity. So we have been uh, really excited to be a part of that journey. I spent about 14 years in two stints with Cisco. I worked at Office Depot during the CompuCom acquisition. I consulted with thousands of MSPs during COVID as well, during the JS group, and now I'm with SonicWall, and I love it. It's a fantastic company with a great culture, 100% channel and partner first. Awesome. Now, you know, our community has heard of SonicWall, many are partners of SonicWall, and so, you know, with you kind of coming in as the, the channel chief in the beginning, now global channel chief, I wanted to hear a little bit more about kind of how what you are striving and how you are bringing community first over at SonicWall and just talk a little bit about what is SonicWall's commitment to the MSP community. Although it is a brand name that everyone knows, what are some of the initiatives that it's trying to do for the MSP space? No, absolutely. It's a great question. So a few things. One, we call it outside in. And all that means is that we are out listening to our partners. We are educating them about how we're taking good to great. Um, we have really reimagined the company. We've been around for 33 years in the cybersecurity space. Space, most beloved for our firewalls, best in class products with a low TCO. But it's cyber threats are increasing and it's not one product that keeps our partners or customers safe. They need multiple layers of security. So we have 
a lot of technology that we're innovating. We have a new head of product in Chandra Prasad, who at RSA talked about our brand new tech roadmap, our single pane of glass SaaS board to manage all those multi-tenants. Um, in addition to that, we made two acquisitions. One with Solutions Granted for MDR, XDR, SOC as a service. The other with Banyan Security for um, Zero Trust CTNA. And so there is two very important things. So besides our switches and firewalls and access points, we also want to have the complete portfolio products, what we build, who we partner with, including Roost, including LionGuard, all our partner ecosystem friends out there, as well as who we're um, acquiring. And so we are very intentional about cultural fit. We are channel first. Michael has been a, a Sonical partner for 18 years and run his MSP now for 22 years. So to have him understand our company, our culture, this was a commitment to each other, just like to our channel partners out there. We are we would be nothing without our partners. And so it's very important that we lean into that. I also relaunched our Secure First program in February, which I'm very excited about. And we did a lot of things there based upon feedback from our partners. So we took the MSP program that we had and we built it into Secure First. So if you are buying through recurring revenue or buying our switch or firewall access point, you're going to earn tier levels with us, which is very exciting. We also lowered our rebate threshold so more partners can earn rebates to reinvest back into their business with us. And in addition to that, we started accruing market development funds. Why is that important? Because we want to help our partners grow. So we are going to co-brand, co-market, co-innovate together like we're doing at your event. And so we want to make sure that we're leaning in there. In addition to that, we know if you're not a Sonical partner or you used to be, we want to bring you back. So we're doing tier match plus one. Whoever you work with, insert partner and name here. If you're a gold partner with them, a silver partner with them, we'll take you at that level and bump you up a level. So if you're a gold XYZ, you'll be platinum Sonic Gold partner for 180 days. We're gonna invest in you because your success is mutually beneficial. So how do we help you hit the ground running? And that's really great. You know, and I, was, and I want to get Rick's uh, um, opinion here and, and comments, you know, to, to quote your husband this morning, uh, Jay McMain, you know, we were talking about in the previous episode how just the current landscape of technology and just this thing called the channel and the MSP space. And one of the big items was not only do we have millennial buyers that are in the market, but it's so important for integrations. And you just mentioned two great platforms that you are looking to have went for the integration process from partnering and then the two acquisitions because now with Sassy Solutions on the all-time rise, it just seems like now over the last couple of years that SonicWall has that breath of fresh air that it probably needed um, to get itself to that next level of the demands of what the community and the partners are asking for. Right. But Rick, you know, when it comes to partnering with a company like SonicWall, you know, what are some things that you're looking for in your MSP to really understand, hey, this is what I'm looking for, a partnership rather than a vendor, really to uh, help me with uh, my MSP stack and what we're doing for our Apple? Well, I will, I will full disclosure, I am and have been a partner of Solutions Granite. So, and one of the things, again, we talk about relationships, talk about friendship. Most important thing for me and any vendor, price comes, it factors in there somewhere, but reliability, dependability, and someone, again, when I need help, I need someone to be there, right? Yes. When I, and I want to feel like they understand or at least try to understand where I'm coming from. And that's the most important thing. When we think about the relationships we have with our own customers, right? We want them to feel that they can rely on us, that when something's wrong, we will stand up for them and try to get it, you know, do our best to solve their issue, right? So that's always the number one, the number one thing I look at. I always say I want my vendors my vendor partners to treat me the same way I want to treat my customers or what we say or in how we know our customers want to be treated, right? So that's always number one. Now, I will say this. I have had a great relationship with Solutions Granted, so I don't expect that to change. But what I do want to ask is one of the things we, we talk about um, or, you know, as I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning, we, we look about, we talk about the importance or is there a Sometimes we talk about it not being as important to have on-premise firewood, right? Yeah. What is your What is your opinion on that? I, I happen to have my own that it's, it has its place and it needs to be there, but we have a lot of people now pushing away from that. Mm -hmm. I say you need to have multiple layers, and it depends on your business, right? In a post-pandemic world, every company is a tech company now, and how they work 
I mean, I don't know, even in our own company, we many of us work remotely. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I think the opportunity to have zero trust networking and the cloud perimeter being safe and protected is very paramount. However, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's one plus one equals three. You need to make sure that at every layer, whether it's endpoint security, identity access management, email security, networking security, the core traditional function of what we would have sold, there's still growth and opportunity there, but the other areas are growing faster. Why is that? Because people have traditionally bought firewalls, but they haven't protected themselves in these other areas. And so that's where I think it's not an either or, for your customers as well. You need to make sure that you mitigate risks at every level and that they are safe and protected. So as Mike would say, a great analogy, which I love. If you have your uh, lock on your front door, maybe that's your firewall, right? Mm -hmm. But then you also need your surveillance camera or your ring doorbell. And maybe you also have a dog monitoring the perimeter and barking and alerting you if something's happening. And all of those things are important to keep your home safe and protected and to give you peace of mind. So it's not a one or the other. It's all the things to make sure that you have the right security, in my opinion. No, that's a good point. And I, I, I happen to agree. But, I, you know, I just we talk about this. business. I, I don't know how you say I guess it's the emphasis on 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 premise. Right. We move our servers off premise. I happen to be, I'm old school, right? So, I still, you know, Paco laughs at me, but I still manage a lot of on-premise service. And I, I, I just happen to like that, right? So, but there, there is, a, I, I do agree with you there. There is not a an either or. There is a adding it all together. Now, taking that into account, how will we expect it like, as as you guys now have, have bought these companies and partnered with these companies, we'll be saying that, and... Now you're combining all of these. How is that? How is that working? Like how is, yeah. What can we expect? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I think we had to figure it out as well. So in this channel for 20 years and some of the companies I worked with, there's two things you could do wrong when you acquire a company is you change, you, you like them for a reason, you bring them into your fold and then you try to change who they are. I would not recommend that. So you will see that is par for the course as solutions granted. Like this, the same team, in fact, we secured the entire Solutions Grand team, including their CFO, Jessica, is still part of our team because we're working on flexible consumption, billing in arrears, canceling any time, scaling those solutions. And there's things that a conventional vendor needs to learn because we're not born in the cloud like many new startups are. So it's we are making sure that we are investing in them, allowing them the ability to really um, drive that relationship and partnership with us uh, and the education together. In addition, reciprocally, we're in 215 countries and territories around the world. So we are able to now invest and help Michael and the managed security team scale this great thing they've done in North America globally. And so we're building our SOC in EMEA. And then we're gonna build a SOC in Asia Pat. Why? Because people want that local support with GRDOP and all of those things that happen in Europe. They need to make sure that they're secure and protected and their information is confidential in their territory, just like we have with our HIPAA compliance and governance and cybersecurity requirements in America. So we wanna make sure that we are meeting our partners where they are in their journey and we're gonna help each other kind of cross pollinate and grow in those areas. Are you tired of dealing with outdated PSA RMM solutions that come with a hefty implementation cost, complicated setups, and pricing structures that don't quite fit your needs? It's time to make a change. Meet SuperOps, a future-ready PSA RMM platform that streamlines IT operations, enhances customer support, ensures security, and boosts client satisfaction. With SuperOps, you get a PSA, RMM, IT documentation, network monitoring, and project management all in one place. Automation of repetitive tasks, enhanced productivity, and reduced errors. You get actionable insights with proactive monitoring to prevent issues. And one of my favorite things, dedicated support from a team committed to your success. SuperOps also offers transparent pricing, putting you in control of your costs. So what are you waiting for? Try SuperOps today for free and evaluate your MSP operations. Over the last seven years, MyMSP has partnered with Huntress as our go-to security platform, detect suspicious endpoint activity, and uncover hidden adversaries. If you've heard recently on several tech news outlets 
and subject matter experts, they're all saying the same thing. You have to have an EDR. That's why we've partnered with Huntress. I cannot tell you how many times we've onboarded a client through the agent on and all the fun that we found for us to clean up. It's no wonder why Huntress has been awarded one of the leading security solutions by G2. You'll hear comments like peace of mind or Huntress, the company that has your back. It's all thanks to their experts in their 24 seven SOC. It's the needed second set of eyes that we need. Not to mention you receive detailed incident reports packed with expert insights written for all skill levels. To find out more, head over to Huntress.com slash unplugged for a trial so you can deploy in minutes with zero user disruption. Tell them that we here at MSP Unplugged sent you. Now, as far as for SonicWall and how it's kind of presented itself over so many years and now this new vision of how it's going through for SonicWall, how is the uh, marketing or advertisement of what SonicWall is right now, how have you, your team and leadership envisioned that? Because I imagine now with the acquisitions and the new services being offered, you don't want to just be known as a UTM provider. You want to be able to known as a security, I would say powerhouse because it's, you know, one of the uh, big three. And, and how have you, or at least the vision that you've seen to bring that to market so MSPs who see SonicWall just don't think UTM? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, you tell them, you tell them again, you tell them again, right? <laughs> and I, I mean that because there's always an opportunity to educate. I still, when I joined SonicWall, people would ask me, are you still owned by Dell? And I was like, wow, that was eight years ago yeah. that we were released from Dell and our private equity back, but people still didn't know that. Yeah. And SonicWall historically was not although beloved, like very partner driven, yep. was that on the road. But you'll see the difference with Michael and myself yep. being community first evangelists. We are always on the road. I mean, last week we're at IT Nation's Cure. We are Robin Robbins. We're here at Pax State Beyond. We are consistently coming out to the community to educate and train, but also to listen and learn what's working, what's not, what can we do better to make you more efficient, effective, and profitable. And that's where I think it's not like I'm locked in an ivory tower somewhere making decisions on behalf of the partners. We're, we're literally building our program and our technology roadmap and our people staffing and coverage and support with our partners having a seat at the table and driving that conversation. We also have a partner advisory council and a tech advisory council in North America, in Europe, and in Asia so that we can take in that feed and in LATAM. Okay. So we're making sure um, that we're investing in the right leadership, the right learnings, and the right changes, including customer support. Like we're leveraging AI and data analytics and we're trying to um, course correct in areas maybe where there was an opportunity to do better. We don't skirt away from those things. We're hearing the feedback, we're reading the Reddits, we're coming to the hotel lobby bar to hear what's working and what's not, and now we're gonna take action. And that's a great feeling, because it's not just the listening, it's making a tangible reaction to what we've learned to help our partners. And I love that because you have seen Sonic Wall on these road shows, even from the last couple of years, really getting in front once you've joined their team, really just on that power pounding on uh, partner first, community first, really trying to drive not only the ability of moving forward as a partner, but also as a community and ecosystem. It's to a point where now you have either longtime partners who have been using Sonic Wall for years, or someone who may be intimidated to use Sonic Wall and not understand some of those things. Not only do you have resources, but now with the, again, acquisitions of like Sonic uh, Solutions Granted, you now have someone who is experienced over 18 years with a great team to say the do's and don'ts and how to do and leverage their uh, Sonic Wall services to really now bring that all in house. There's no more guesswork anymore. There's no more trying to flail and figure it out. You have the ability to do so. And I, I commend you all for doing that as well. Thank you. Um, you know, kind of as we kind of round this out this episode, I know we had such a short time here, but a lot of information on really what Sonic Wall is trying to do. You know, what would you say something that we may not have discussed that if an MSP is either looking to just really stay relevant and get ahead of the curve and they're looking at Sonic Wall, whether it's to come back or as a new, what would you say to those who are looking to try and improve their services outside of everything that you've listed as great value? 
what really is brings it home and really to you that why you are at Sonic Wall and what it's bringing to the MSP partners that have joined you so far? Yeah, it's a great question. And the reason that I joined Sonic Wall very simply is this. I had a partner and she said to me, you care so much about partners, but maybe some of the places you work don't have the same sentiment. But Sonic Wall cares about partners but they need someone like you to be like, I'll say they're, they're evangelists. <laughs> and I think if you came together, you could do great things. And I just want you to meet the team. Just meet the team and tell me what you think. And I was not looking to, to join Sonic Wall. I've always valued and respected them. They've been an industry legend for 33 years uh, in this space. But when I talked to Jason Carter, the CRO, who's been there 17 years, started out running inside sales, running the install team, worked his way up, is their chief revenue officer. Bob Van Kirk, their CEO, was their CMO, was their CRO, and now their CEO, has been there many years. And then this combination of people do, like Oscar, who's running LATAM and is our neighbor in South Florida. Um, there's Spencer Starkey, who's running AMIA, new to the company. Uh, Chandra Prasad, who's our head of product, comes from Cisco playing to be the best in class product and me coming with 20 years of channel saying, I know product's important, but all things created equal. How are we driving the relationship with our partners? As you said, I had a great story with a partner who said, I'm married. I said, I know you're married. He <laughs> said, if I don't talk to my wife in a day or a week or a month or a year, am I still married? I was like, I don't think you are my friend. <laughs> and he said, that's what it is. For a partner and a vendor, we need the relationship. We need trust. We need respect. We need to help one another. And I said, that's spot on. And for me, that's what I feel. We're in this together. It's a reciprocal investment in one another. And if you need me, I may not have all the answers, but you guarantee you reach out to me, I'll sign you someone who does. And you may not be a Sonic Wall partner today, but in the long run, I hope that we can earn your trust so that we can drive your business together because that's what we're all about. That's amazing. Well, Michelle, I really appreciate you spending the time with us here as we're live at PAX 8 Beyond over here at the Gaylord Convention Center. Um, for those that are listening that may want to reach out to learn more about what Sonic Wall has going on, or maybe just to talk to you and pick your brain a little bit about what their experience has been with Sonic Wall and how can they improve on that, what's the best way they can reach out to you? Okay, so honestly, reach out to me anyway. You could email me directly at mragusa, R-A-G-U-S-A at sonicwall.com. Find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Carrier Pigeon, <laughs> Hotel Lobby Bar tonight at Pax Beyond. I'm there at the block party with you. Let's figure out how we can help. And if you were a Sonic Wall partner and you're not today, let me talk to you about how we can talk about how we've reimagined our company and the passion we have for our partners. And if you are a Sonic Wall partner, please keep us honest and tell me how we can continue to make it the best partnership that we can. That's awesome. Well, I greatly appreciate you coming out and appreciate the support over for TechCon Unplugged. As we mentioned, TechCon Unplugged, it is our now fifth annual event happening September 12th to the 14th at the Hotel Arundel Preserve. It's going to be an amazing time. There's going to be a great amount of sessions, 25 plus. There's going to be two networking events and after hours entertainment. There's going to be all inclusive in your ticket, the expo hall meals, the refreshments and the happy hours. And they're going to give you an automatic entrance on all those great giveaways and raffles as well. But the most most important part which we kind of alluded to the last episode is we always have that hallway magic because that's where all of the great concrete items are going to happen where you can take it back with you to get your business to the next level so head over to techonunplug.com get your tickets today and we appreciate you tuning in into this episode of msp unplug we are here every week you can find the video podcast on youtube.com slash msp unplug like subscribe hit that notification button and you can be known or be notified whenever an episode is is, uh, published on our channel and we are on the go if you have a favorite podcatcher app we're on apple Podcasts, amazon music and spotify so as rick likes to say he has a face for radio so if you feel like you don't <laughs> want to watch the video podcast you can always go from there but again truly thank you for coming on rick as always my friend it's a great time having you here and we will see you next time on thank msp you. unplugged <laughs>